Apostasy seems to be rising, not only in the church, but sometimes in the lives of individual believers. What is apostasy, and why is it such a threat to us today? Well, hello, I'm Tim Moore, and I'm here with Dennis Pollock of Lamb and Lion Ministries in the past, and back today as a special guest, an expert on apostasy. And Dennis, we've been talking about apostasy today. That's kind of the graphic we're representing here. It's it's causing the church's very foundations, or in this case, the back end, to drop off. Right. How would you define apostasy? Well, we've talked about that as being a drifting away from the cardinal truths of Scripture. And the church has a pretty good grasp on what the Bible is really saying if, if, you, if you go with Christian orthodoxy. But a lot of people, they're so eager to have a special revelation, a special insight, to be above the ordinary Christian. They move away from the orthodox, tried and true beliefs of the Bible, and they get into areas that either they cannot prove or they're just patently false. And I would call that apostasy. Or sometimes they succumb to the world's pressure to be on the right side of history as the world's ideology shifts. And we've seen that happen dramatically in the last few years. And Christians who are not well grounded in the Word of God and don't know what those beliefs are, the orthodox beliefs of the Christian faith, find themselves drifting away as well. How can churches stay true to the Word of God? And what's one of the dangers that we have even recognized in churches too often today? Yeah. Well, we stay true by preaching the whole Word. I think one of the, the ways it helps with ministers particularly is to teach expository messages. We're going to go through the book of James over the next five weeks instead of just going on your own pet doctrines, you know, the things that really excite you. And one of the things we've talked about is the fact that in some cases, apostasy is not so much that Christians or, or believers are no longer, uh, they, they, they've moved into false teaching. They've just cut out about half the teachings of the Bible. Let me just give you an uh, illustration. Uh, there was a time when I was starting a church and my son-in-law was helping me and he was into photography, so he was going to do something for our website. And in order to make it look kind of cool and attractive and hip, he sh he showed picture of me uh, a picture of me and a couple of the the other people that were leading in the church with only half of our faces showing, and uh, I, I went to him. I said, Seth, this is only half of our faces. He said, Well, that just looks cool. I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I want my whole face to show. I may not be the most handsome guy in the world, but still, they need to see the whole dentist, not half the dentist. Sadly, in a church today, a lot of times we're getting half the picture of God. Uh, and, and, and the truth is, Tim, I honestly don't believe it's just something that is an issue today. I can remember when I was in my 20s as a pastor, I would sometimes listen to TV preachers who only preach the positive side of God. They never talk about wrath or judgment or hell or the Lord's return and the, 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 the negative things that are going to happen or the, 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 the disasters they're going to have. They wouldn't touch any of that. It was all, God thinks you're swell. He thinks you're wonderful. He's got a great plan for your life. And, and there's truth in that. But it's like they wouldn't touch the other side. I can remember in my 20s saying, do they not read the Bible? Yes. You know, when you look at what, how Paul felt about things, how Jesus felt. Jesus said to his disciples, the world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify that its works are evil. He's saying, your problem is nobody dislikes you. You're too positive. You're too fun. You're too nice. You're going along with the crowd. You're going along with the crowd. He said, they hate me because I'll testify that what they're doing is wrong. And I, I really believe that's a word for the church today. You know, the, uh, John Wesley one time said, I must be doing something wrong. Everybody's complimenting me too much. I'm not getting the criticism I used to get. 
<laughs> That's a good insight and wisdom. I've even heard Christians and some pastors say, well, I'm a New Testament Christian, which would suggest that they have ignored the Old Testament, that they're not even reading or studying the Old Testament. And one of the things I would encourage believers as individuals to do is get into the Word of God. Read it, as you said. Yeah. Read it for yourself expositorily, not just hopping and skipping around for the favorite verses that you know and love, but read it for revelation as the Holy Spirit brings you to greater understanding. And I'll even suggest this. Most of us have access, or if you don't, go and get one to a Bible that has a good concordance, to where every verse is tied to other references in Scripture. And you'll find in the New Testament, most of the verses are tied back to Old Testament references because they are either fulfillments of Old Testament prophecies or they are continuations of themes that the Lord introduced in the Old Testament. And as you do that, as you stitch together what the Lord has revealed by the Holy Spirit guiding you and even using, yes, the tool of a concordance, I believe you'll come to realize that all of God's Word is wonderful and magnificent and it all fits together for His complete revelation to mankind. Yeah. A lot of people have the idea that the Old Testament God was angry all the time. He carried lightning bolts on his waist to get, take them out and hurl it at any time. And the New Testament God is easygoing, chilled out, laid back. Just and His biggest uh, phrase he uses all the time is no big deal. Uh, but you read some of the New Testament, you read the book of Revelation, you read what Jesus said to the churches, you, you read some of the warnings Paul gave, if, and you say, hey, wait a minute, God can still get upset. God can still be bothered by our behavior. Maybe we ought to behave ourselves. Yes, we should. Well, clearly, in addition to behaving ourselves, what we are advocating is for you to be grounded in the Word of God. Yeah. To be like the Bereans, Paul complimented the Bereans because they knew the Word of God and even as he was sharing the gospel truth with them, they were testing it against the Old Testament Word of God that they'd already hidden in their heart. We encourage you to do that as well. Hide the Word of God in your heart. You'll be able to test everything, and you will be able to avoid the drift into apostasy that we're witnessing today.